What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds. Now, I have a question for you. Would you call this house Victorian? How about this one? Or this one? Or this one? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys what Victorian is and also showing you some buildings from styles that often get lumped into the umbrella term Victorian. Now, let us begin with some Georgian. Okay, so we're going to start here with the Georgian period. Now, you can see in the background there a timeline that starts off here in 1715 and goes all the way up there to 1915 in the Edwardian period. Now, as we walk along the street, you'll see the styles evolve from this early Georgian house here up to the later Edwardian Baroque styles. So we can't wait to show you everything as we go on up the street. But as I mentioned, we're going to start here with the Georgian period. The year 1715 is all about when King George was invited invited over from the Hanover lands in Germany and he became King of England George I, hence the name Georgian. Now these early Georgian buildings looked very similar to this, lots of red brick, lots of white mouldings around the doors and windows and you've got the dormers up there with a nice pitched roof. Now the reason you can see all of this white around these windows is because in our texture pack here, which is the WBC build server texture pack, iron trap doors have been painted a sort of quartz colour as it gives a really nice effect around the windows. You'll see a few little subtle changes as we walk along the street, especially iron railings like you can see there. Now that is just because this texture pack really does help emphasise the Georgian and the Victorian styles. So let's move on down the street a little bit. You can see here now we come into a bit more of a recognisable style for a Georgian townhouse. This is a bit more of a Palladian style which is to do with emphasising the vertical details. Now the idea here is this is meant to look like a column so you have the base there of the column, the centre part and then the actual capital and the top part of the column. Now this is following a style known as Palladia which is come over from the sort of end of the Renaissance in Europe at the time and it's the neoclassical style that we'll be following along here. You can see it differs from the earlier Georgian stuff which is very much more similar to what we've got over there in that house. So we're going to move on down the street a little bit more into this sort of canal lock area and come to what you guys would expect to see when we're talking about Georgian townhouses. That's right, we have a beautiful square here. This is now set in 1750, and this is exactly what you would see if you're walking around Victorian London. Hence why a lot of people get confused with these and being Victorian townhouses, they are not. So during the sort of 18th century, a lot of land was being sold off in London from the big houses that used to own it. And in their places, these lovely urban dwellings were built around squares and parks to give people an idea of moving to towns and cities rather than living out in the countryside. So you can see here we've got some nice little features over on this side. This is very common of the Georgian townhouse or any Georgian building because at the time there was something known as the window tax. Windows were actually made, you had to pay money to have windows so a lot of people blocked up a lot of windows that weren't really in use. For me here the reason these are blocked up is because the chimney breast actually exists on this side of the building so you don't really want uh, windows next to the chimney or anything like that but in order to do this these are just using uh, red brick walls to give a nice little bit of extra depth there. So let's move on down here a bit more and we come to an even more recognisable style. So if you look around even at like I guess 10 Downing Street or anything like that in London you could definitely see this sort of effect. Now using acacia logs here I've managed to replicate that sort of dark grey uh, black uh, sort of brick effect that you see very much in Georgian builds. So I've, I've tried to include quite a lot of sort of details to make it feel a bit more Georgian a bit more period. So we've even got our canal lock in here as well. So we're going to move on down now into the 1770s and that's right you can see it here. This is the Crescent. So this is my rendition of the Royal Crescent in Bath and this was built in 1777 and it actually led on to people building this throughout the later styles as well especially within the Regency style and I gotta say I love this building so much however I do only rate it a 5 out of 10 on the circle scale because it's just a semicircle. Now, anyway, moving on into our next period, this is the Regency period, named after the fact that King George III was becoming a little bit mad. He had just lost the colonies in America, and also his yeah mind wasn't all there anymore. So his son took over the running of the country, hence the term Regency, meaning to take over from the king. Now, what we've got here is lovely Regency-styled villas and townhouses built uh, to sort of give you that really nice elegant look about them. So these are based on a couple I found out in London and also we've got more from seaside towns such as Plymouth and Brighton. 
And the idea of these is to be much more austere, much more uh, following the classical sort of proportions. You've got the idea of the column here, the Palladian style still. And I've got to say, I love them. And you see these all over the country here in the UK still, especially in seaside towns. And they're usually painted white these days, but originally in the Georgian period, they would have been probably a bit more like this. Now, the buildings were trying to be replicating of stone or sandstone, or even like a nice Portland stone, which is what you see when you see the white buildings but for us here I've built this one to replicate a nice granite stone but using stuff like uh, concrete powder in the walls and some wool as well gives you that nice impression. Now another feature of the sort of Regency period are these big bow windows. So you've got bay windows like those there but bows are a larger shallower curve which gives you a nice impression like this. So we're going to move on now to the sort of later part of the Regency period and you come to a bit more of a classical theme. So these are townhouses designed to look like one big palace front and you can see how it works really well and I gotta say this is actually probably my favorite type of Georgian building I just love it I love how clean and elegant it looks I would love to live in one of these on the seaside somewhere imagine that looking over some water I mean we have got this canal here but still that does look beautiful doesn't it so this carries on up through until we get into the early Victorian period so we're still going through the Regency style you can see all of the bay windows here especially on these ones here there's just so much going on the detail doesn't have to be all there you know you can have quite nice plain fronts but still it does look so elegant and you've got the classical features here and like in this town hall building and also in this church so we move on now into the Victorian period. The year is 1837 when Queen Victoria came to the throne and the styles at the time are still reminiscent of the previous period. So nothing changes too dramatically. You have this building here which I built as a lovely little vicarage. It's really nice uh, creamy coloured brick building and it actually emphasises still a lot of the classical features that were very common during the late Regency period. So you can see it's got a hipped roof but it's sitting over the eaves which is kind of the Italianate style coming through which will get onto in a second. It's got the bay windows at the front here and a lovely little detail around the front door. So moving on through you can see we still have this sort of villa motif going through all these lovely white villas here. So these are a lot larger than the ones I showed you a minute ago and these were built in around the 1840s and I just love how these ones look. They're so big, large and imposing and you really really would want to live in one of these wouldn't you? So we move on now to another style. This is known as the Italianate style. So it features a bit more heavily some uh, influences from Italy. So we've got this idea here of this bell tower which is a very common feature across this style. Think to Osborne House which is the Queen Victoria's palace over on the Isle of Wight built very much in this style and it's actually what sort of caused people to fall in love with it. Another key feature here are these double arched windows which sit on a nice million in the centre there but also we have down here some Venetian windows which again is very common of this sort of classical style. Now this I would love to explain a bit more about so I'm going to do some feature videos on this style and also on our next style over here. So the year is 1850. Railway are now in fashion and so is the revival of gothic architecture so these buildings here are built to represent sort of the gothic principles of sort of the medieval period so what you've got is the high pitched roofs you have the sort of different colored bricks in there I love a polychromatic brick which is what you kind of have going on here with the oak and the red brick but you also have the windows set in a similar style to those of the italianate lots of different features coming together in this sort of period but i've got to say these buildings here are beautiful and the black stone really really helps with the roofs Okay, well it's now time to move away from the British styles a second and actually have a little bit of a notable mention from across the pond. So the year is 1860 and at the moment in America the style and fashion is the Second Empire. Second Empire referring to the fact that at this time in France there was Napoleon III on the throne, the Second Emperor of France. So what we've got is we've got these buildings which definitely follow a sort of gothic feel to them but they also have this really nice classical feel as well. I gotta say the Blackstone roofs work so well for this and this building here is one of my favourites. Now I built one especially for this video and that's this one over here. So this is a bit more of a gothic themed one and again it's a second empire house you wouldn't be too dissimilar seeing this in somewhere in like upstate New York or something but I gotta say I really enjoyed building this one because I've used something 
little bit different for the roof. I've gone for dead coral here, giving it a nice tiled effect from a distance. And I've got to say, yeah, I love it. So if you guys want a tutorial on this house, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to make one. So we're going to move back over to the UK now. The year is 1870. And the buildings are starting to take a bit more of a shape in the lower classes. So these would be for more middle class homeowners. You've got the small bays, but you've also got these gothic feels about them. You've got the uh, sort of the pitched roofs and also the arched windows. So again, so I've used a bit of a different block for the actual bricks here. I've gone for jungle planks instead of bricks. And I think that looks really good. So we're going to move on through. We've got some more later Victorian buildings here, like this double bayed house. You wouldn't be too dissimilar seeing that across the whole country. At this point, builders started to use designs uh, from architects across the whole country. So you would see this one definitely taken part somewhere else. Again, one of my favorite styles of houses. I just love houses that have big bay windows like this. So we're going to move on into the 1880s. We have a bit of a sub style here. This is known as the Queen Anne style of buildings. Now, it wasn't actually built during the reign of Queen Anne, nor were the buildings it's based on, but still, it still coined that name somehow. So what it's got is feature pieces such as the Flemish or the Dutch gables at the top there, big prominent chimney breasts and fireplaces, and also you've got the huge chimneys there, and then just windows built up in a sort of square bay with a large window on top. Speaking of bay windows, as we move through the end periods of the Victorian, we have these more middle class Victorian houses with their bay windows, which are becoming a bit more square. Now we move in out of the end of the Victorian period. The year is 1901. Queen Victoria has sadly passed away and her son Edward VII has come to the throne. And during this time, the sort of revival of the Tudor styles have started up. We still have this building here, which is a bit more of a later Victorian, early Edwardian. And you've got the square bay and the rounded bay there, which shows you how it's sort of changing. But in this period, the Edwardian, we have more square bays than rounded ones. But also you notice the key feature here is the half timbered section on the top. Now this is mock Tudor because obviously these houses were nothing like Tudor buildings, but you can see here throughout this period, the builds themselves are a bit more detached or semi-detached. And it's what you kind of see across a lot of sort of suburban England and also just the countryside. So we move on down through here. Another key feature actually is the fact that they have nice little different colored tiles as the walkways up to the houses. Go and have a look. You'll see next time you look at Google Street Maps or something. They have some really strange coloured um, little tiled walkways. So moving on down, we have our final section here, which is, of course, Edwardian Baroque. So, you know, during the Edwardian period, there was a lot going on. It was probably the height of the British Empire. World War I hadn't started yet. But what we've got here is my rendition of the old war office. Now, I actually built this about five years ago. I never really finished it, but I brought it into this world because I went, hang on, that's Edwardian Brock. That will fit this theme really well. But what you can see here is I've started retexturing the colours, uh, but over this side is how I originally had it built. And you can see how a difference of five years can make between one, the blocks we can use, but also my building practices. Now, anyway, guys, that concludes this little tour up this street. So we come to the year 1915, 200 years later from when we started over there in the Georgian period. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed my first Minecraft building guides all about the Victorian styles. Now I know we use that term as an umbrella term, but I think that's just because the way Minecraft works on YouTube, you have to lump it all under Victorian. Hopefully in the future that will change with all of you becoming inspired to build just like this. If you wish to learn more about any of these uh, styles and ideas, I've been reading a fantastic series of books by Trevor York. I've left a link down below to the Amazon site where I've got all of them from, and they give you lovely little guides on how the Victorians, how Houses worked along with the Regency and Georgian houses. So guys, without further ado, remember, get inspired, get building, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.